All right, everybody. It's another week, um, and quite a week. Um, the title says it all. I mean, never a dull moment. Um, I think that some big things are happening right now, and I've talked about this on the show before where we've got so many things in the pipeline, and actually, I think it was Rob Allen who kind of led to this um, on a recent interview that we'll talk about, but the concept of of that um, there's so many things in the pipeline, there's so many plates spinning, there's so many... Um, major developments that we're waiting for. But then all of these different news items are kind of happening out of left field, kind of by surprise, kind of unsuspected. Um, this was most evident actually with the drop announcement for Fed now. That was crazy because nobody knew it was coming, not even Hedera, right? Not even drop. Um, and really it's one of these things where you kind of start to think, is, is this kind of new phase starting already? What, what Lehman kind of would talk about and Mance would talk about at the very beginning, which was, they're not really going to know what's happening on the network. They're not going to know what applications are launching. And I mean, that's true for like, you know, um, community applications or maybe like a little NFT project here or there or a new DEX or something. Sure. Right. Hedera and the governing council, you know, aren't going to be aware that some, certain types of things are happening. But when you have something as big as like a U.S. Fed now, like application partnership kind of thing, just go live without, without that coordination at that scale, it really kind of shows you Hedera being defined as what it wants to be defined as, which is they talk about it being the plumbing, right? So if you're going to be the plumbing, you you might not be factored into these types of things as much. We've also heard um, in regards to other companies, they don't necessarily want to reveal their identity when they're talking about use cases, or they don't necessarily want to mention that they're using Hedera when in fact they might be, right? Just because... It's a, it's, what did they call it? A competitive differentiator, right? So there's all these different dynamics that I think make Hedera especially interesting. We're going to talk about this especially right now, but things are happening. They're unexpected. They're catching us off guard and, and it's exciting. Um, and at the same time as all these kinds of things are happening, you still, like, again, like, you still think about, you know, what was Lehman talking about when he was talking about that Fortune 10 use case? What's going on with coupons? Like, um, all these all these other things in the, side, in the back of your mind. And then the broader vision, I don't know. And, even, and also, too, just even public engagement, sentiment, and a shift in focus, I feel, more to retail, or at least a demand and shift of focus. There's just a few things where it feels like there there are many changes happening um and we're going to get into all of it but with changes you know comes with you know fud right fear uncertainty and doubt um or just you know misinformation and also some price volatility we've had like we had h bar pump 20 percent go back down pump again 20 percent go back down and that happens sometimes. It's happened in the past, but the amount of volume is what is really interesting, right? Three hundred million dollars of volume in twenty-four hours—that's substantial. You know that that kind of means something. And then the social lift too. Like right now, hashtag Hello Future is trending, and I see H Bar trending all the time. I know it's kind of tailored to me, but you th there is you know you you see it more and more and more and more. So. There's just so much happening that we're going to talk about. Um, and I mean, one of the big things that happened was Galaxy launching, right, that we talked about last week. I actually had um, Solo Cisse, the CEO, to chat about the platform on. So if you missed that, go back and listen to the last episode. But what's going on this week? Well, we're going to talk about what I'm calling the Category 5 FUD NATO um, out there that is an interesting opportunity to learn about the network. We're going to talk about it. Um, yeah, lots on that. Um, 
Hedera has some news regarding their JSON RPC um, infrastructure, which is interesting. The governing council meeting minutes for July were published with some interesting insights. Um, Aberdeen is going live with stuff on the main net. We got Citadel wallet updates. Dovu is doing what I think is the, the most substantial change in their project so far. Lots of thoughts on that. Time to consensus is down. Um, of course, we'll touch on the drop Fed now stuff. And there's also an, an, uh, an extra element to the Fed now news that I don't think people really caught um, that we're going to talk about. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff, uh, MasterCard things. Yeah, it's going to be good. And with that, good evening from Ottawa, Canada, everyone. My name is Brandon Davenport, AKA it's Brandon D. It is Sunday, August 20th. And you're listening to Hashgraph News and Rumors, episode 88, never a dull moment. That's the title of the episode, a weekly show where we cover the top stories related to Hedera, HBAR and everything in between. Listen live on Twitter Spaces every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and other platforms and hear past episodes. Get all the info you need about the show at itsbrandond.com slash hbar. For folks listening live now, check out the News and Rumors mega thread pinned on the top of the Jumbotron as we dive into each story. Also take a moment to share the space with your friends. And if you've got some interesting news people should know about, click the comment button at the bottom right. Maybe share a photo of your, where you're listening from. I get some cool photos sometimes. For folks listening to the recording, you know, on Apple Podcasts or whatever, or Spotify, leave a comment, break down your thoughts. We talk, we're going to talk about it a lot today. So um, no guests today. we got too much going on. Um, and... Let's just dive into it. I mean, before we, you know, before we, before we dive right into it, I think what I was talking about at the beginning of the show, things feeling different. I think a part of that is more people than ever knowing about Hedera, right? And I think that that's kind of steadily grown, especially this year with the increase in TPS and conversations around that, but also there's been some really recent, um, Intense discussions, I think, sparked by a recent intense growth in the knowledge of, you know, what Hedera is, you know, what do people know about it? Um, and I'm going to talk about what's been going on. I don't want to like get too specific because um, I think that really if if people are really in the weeds with, you know, the uh, conversations between, you know, the Solana, Algorand, Bitcoin and Hedera communities – if everyone's gone into those topics, I'm pretty sure you've read it all. I just want to share my thoughts. But in general, right, in general, when I mention those communities in Hedera, um, I think that largely um, there's lots of opportunity. There's lots of really great things happening between those different communities. Like I'm in Hedera spaces and I see a lot of Algorand I see Solana people, I see Bitcoin people, not Ordinals people, right? Um, we have like people from the Hedera community going into other spaces. Like I'll go into like Ethereum or like music related spaces. The, the, generally, I think that um, things are pretty like as copacetic as they can be in crypto. But recently some stuff's happened and I'm going to talk about it. And I mean, really what happened was in a bear market, right, where everything was kind of just boring when it came to price, right? Bitcoin, most other altcoins, Ethereum, right? They all kind of they all kind of follow Bitcoin, um, and we're in a bear market. You know, we're you know people call it a crypto winter. So when something exciting happens with a particular coin, it kind of stands out a little more, right? And Hedera over the last few weeks has, when you just look at the charts, it's been really exciting because Hedera has made some moves on its own and quite substantial moves, right? We saw going from five cents to seven cents, right? And back down and back up again and now back down. That's just increased volatility that grabs eyeballs. And 
at the same time, it was driven by a substantial volume, right? It was actually a lot of money making those moves happen. So I think that for a few reasons, quite quickly, um, the attention was grabbed by other communities. People went, HBAR, what is this thing? What's this all about? Um, and maybe some folks in other communities that weren't maybe as vocal about Hadira, maybe were holders, or just that topic in general wasn't top of mind for everybody. All of a sudden, it came top of mind. Um, and, you know, it was, you know, it's the Solana, Bitcoin, and Algorand communities had folks inside them publish some prominent content, right, on YouTube or on Twitter, whatever you want to call it, from important figures that have a large following. And a lot of that content was not, you know, it, it wasn't really, I'm not going to say it wasn't productive to a conversation. It just wasn't accurate and definitely elicited, like, a, a response from the Hedera community. Um, and I just think wasn't handled in the right way from the people who posted it because we'll get into it. But basically, it's like, naturally, you're going to find information that supports your viewpoints, Right. Um, and, a, and a lot of this content that we saw that got this backlash from the Hedera community, I think it was some of these folks taking a, a second look at Hedera, going, wow, this thing is gaining momentum. What is this all about? This can't be as good as the network that I'm invested in, right? Or just that kind of my, and, and I think that you naturally find content that reinforces your uh, viewpoints. I mean, we all do that, especially in crypto. And, you know, I think that Hashgraph technology and the Hedera network are so far removed from first and second generation blockchain networks. It's hard to contextualize, like even some of the way the services are named or how accounts are handled or the governance or just the community in general. It's like so different and counterintuitive to what you'd expect from you know, uh, a network in the best way. And I think is the reason why we're, we're kind of, you know, hash graph enthusiasts, but you know, in a bear market, morale is low. There's lots of emotions and Hedera is a disruptive technology. You know what I mean? It's like, that's the reality of it. And we're witnessing some of this disruption. And on the surface, Hedera makes some claims that kind of can seem too good to be true. Right. I mean, low fixed fees, a thousand times more efficient than Visa, asynchronous uh, BFT, leaderless, carbon negative, decentralized, open source, and like a bunch of other aspects. I mean, you know, that's a lot to absorb. And I mean, Hedera is not the first project to crop up over the last few years to promise things like this at this scale. So it's a, I think it's a natural reaction when you read about a network like Hedera for red flags to pop up because it's such a disruptive breakthrough technology. It's just, I think that it elicits that kind of response in a lot of ways. And also, like I said, in general, there's just, it, it doesn't have that parity with Web3 more generally. Like it's so different from the technology and the way that it's governed and all that different kind of stuff. There's so many unique aspects um, about Hedera that set it apart. It do a good thing, but also makes it a difficult learning curve to kind of understand. Um, and yeah, the knee jerk reaction, I think for a lot of people is just to say, Hey, this is BS. It's too good to be true. Here's why here's information that kind of uh, refutes a lot of these claims. And some of that information is outdated. And I mean, let's take a step back. I mean, again, we're not going to go deep into the weeds on this. Most folks listening have already. And if you haven't, you can go check it out. But I think you understand what it's about. We've seen it all the time um, in technology, right? This happens all the time. If you were to say, oh, there's competing technologies out there and each of them, you know, think that theirs is the best. It's like, it's that's happened with everything. You know, Mac versus PC, you know, Apple versus Microsoft, Linux versus Windows, iPhone versus Android. Like, and then you can even go deeper into, you know, other different types of technology. It's like, what kind of tech stacks do you like? You know, what kind of, uh, you know, libraries do you prefer? Development environments. It's like everybody has an opinion on things. Some things are better than others. Some things that aren't as good as other things are more popular. It's this technology. It's kind of the way that it goes. And it's my team versus your team in a lot of ways. 
Um, and I think that this is a result of networks, you know, including Hedera, fostering kind of these identities, right? And that's what Apple does. That's what Microsoft does. That's what video games do. That's what sports teams do, right? That brand loyalty. And there's a different twist in crypto because you have that direct investment component. You have a crypto tied to it. So that's this kind of, you know, situation that it's in is like, it's just a technology thing, but it's heightened because it's crypto and the, the kind of the fair thing. So the criticisms that from all these conversations that we've been seeing, and again, I'm not going to even mention anyone specific. I mean, we have, you know, a community member from Solana, from Algorand, from the Bitcoin community. There's just been a handful of very popular people share some bad takes about Hedera. And I'll, what I'll say is fair is, you know, Hedera sometimes uses outdated information when talking about other networks, but that just happens. Other networks use outdated information when talking about Hedera, right? Some of these people levying criticisms on Hedera use outdated information. Um, that's just kind of the way things go, but fair. I mean, ideally, let's not do that. Um, and they're like one of the, one of the folks from the Algorand community was hammering on the fact that, you know, Algorand was left off some of the marketing materials or charts um, that Hedera would publish when comparing different crypto networks and um, how much more efficient Hedera was than other networks. Um, and I mean, we talked last week about the specific debates around like the um, energy efficiency and all those different types of things. So there's, there's all nuances to that, but fair. I mean, Sure. I think that if Hedera is going to do these types of comparisons, let's look at things holistically. Fair. Um, Hedera, you know, I think another fair criticism that, you know, isn't true is that people go, Hedera is, you know, it's the private corporate chain controlled by companies. And it, we can, we can, you know, there's, again, there's plenty of conversation out there with, you know, rebuttals to this argument. It's just not true. But the reality is, is that, that's the brand image that Hedera has for a lot of people. It, I think that we hear over and over and over again how incredibly beneficial, you know, what an unfair advantage it is for Hedera to have the governing council when working with enterprise and stuff like that. It, it's a key that unlocks so many doors that aren't open for other networks. And when you look at it that way, you know, in the plus column, but on the other side, how it appears for a lot of people when they look at Hedera or go to the website is it's a private corp corporate, you know, chain. Um, and, and it sucks, but I mean, it's not true to use that as a criticism, but it's a, I think it's just a trade off of the way that Hedera presents itself. It's you, it, it's tough to get both the retail community and the enterprise community to accept you because components of each uh, will detract. So it's it's a tough balance. You know, it's clear Hedera is favoring enterprise. But this is what it comes to the cost of. So I, I say it's a fair criticism, not because it's true, but because it's you just got to own it. This is the way this is the way things go. And it, I think that Hedera should definitely right now put more effort into appealing to the retail community and taking that criticism seriously, even though it may not be correct, even though Hedera as Mance would say, is arguably the most decentralized network out there for many aspects. You have to recognize that there's, you know, sometimes there's facts and then there's truth, you know, it's tough. Um, the other thing is confusion around HCS. People will always say Hedera has, you know, all of those transactions can't be real because they're using the consensus service. They're just it's just nodes communicating to each other. It's just internal network traffic that shouldn't count as transactions. Solana does the same thing. Why is Hedera doing the same thing as Solana? Again, we all know it's just not true. Um, and Hedera consensus service transactions are paid transactions. There's micropayments with each of those. They, they all serve a purpose. It's a notary public service for enterprise. It's a it's one of the most innovative tech products of our of our lifetime, essentially. But the again, the brand of it is horrible, right? When you hear and see Hedera Consensus Service, when most people in Web3 see that, it's a fair assumption to say this is a service for coming to consensus. 
when it's not. Um, and unfortunately, again, it's a criticism that's not true, but it's a criticism that no, like, no amount of refute for refuting it or trying to correct the record or trying to educate. It's it's just a horrible name for it. It's a horrible brand for the service, and I and it's just it's a known thing. I think that they should change the brand of it. Um, it's just it's just tough, and I get that the word consensus and the Hedera consensus service makes sense, but it just doesn't to the web three community. And it's just going to be a head, an unnecessary headwind. So again, not true. Um, but I put it in the fair column because what are you supposed to do? Like when you, when you're trying to quote, do your own research and you're going, Oh, these transactions are the consensus service. Your natural conclusion is this is a network function. It's, it's difficult. Again, it goes to what I was saying about Hedera just being so different makes it difficult. Um, and, you know, I think that in general, it's like when you get to the point where you discover a technology that may cause a technology you're investing in to be inferior, it's tough. It puts you into a tough headspace. And I'm not talking about anyone in particular. Um, it's just something that you have to understand when you're in the technology space. Things move fast. Generally, when they say, oh, this is the theoretical limit, nothing's going to be better, you know, it's just not true. It's just never going to be true in technology. There's always going to be something better. And if you're, if you don't have that open mindset, you just get put in a position where you just operate from a place of fear, um, trying to shut something down, trying to convince yourself that it's just not true. Um, and I think that a lot of the criticisms come from that headspace, but put fairly enough, I mean, it's like, um, anyone, anyone can succumb to that, especially in web three. So what's not fair about these criticisms that have been kind of levied against Hedera in all of this discussion. And what it really comes down to is, um, a Reddit comment that was left on the Hedera subreddit. We're going to talk about Reddit, but someone said a quote, and I just think it fits it so well. It's quote, how dare a coin like Hedera use its strengths to its advantage? Um, that's again, that's what happens when you have a disruptive technology. Um, when you have those unfair advantages, it just elicits a certain type of response. It, it threatens a lot of the ways that people make money. Um, you know what I mean? It's, we talked about this last week, how a lot of the web three space depends on hidden fees in large network gas. So it's just, sometimes you operate from that place. Um, they use a lot of outdated information. A lot of the information that I've seen shared by these other communities, or again, I, I don't want to say these communities as a, like, I want to say every community has these folks in it. The Hedera community has these folks in it that'll literally crap on anything that isn't Hedera. Um, but there are definitely things that are just ridiculous about this. And a lot of it comes down to just outdated information. Um, they, you know, when you have that big of a following and you can influence so many people's decisions. You kind of, you, you have a responsibility to go a little deeper. And I will say, I want to give a shout out to a frequent guest on the show, King Solomon, um, you know, from the XRP community. That's a great example of the reality of things is people on other networks can generally, generally get along, at least by the standards of crypto, at least by the standards of technology communities, right? Again, just an analogy. If you were, um, an iPhone, if you were a hardcore iPhone fan, right. And you went on an Android subreddit or community and you shared your criticisms of Android. It's the, it's just a different, it's the same types of conversations, same types of discussions that have been happening on the internet forever around technology, just the way things are. But King Solomon's a great example of a, a prominent community member with a large following that just can navigate multiple networks and be an investor in different technologies and do that deeper research and not stop when you hit roadblocks or 
when there's still more to uncover. And unfortunately, lots of people in all sorts of different ecosystems just don't do that. They do a Google search about, you know, how many nodes does Hedera have? Um, is Hedera patented or is it open source? Um, you know, all these different types of things. And they just go with the first result that they see. It's just a lot of it's outdated information. And it's so ridiculous that one of these um, community members on the Solana side cited Hedera as having 20,000 Twitter followers. Hedera has 300,000 Twitter followers, you know, albeit it's a smaller following than most other networks. We should get those number up. Those are, those are rookie numbers, but just literally just go on Twitter and search Hedera and look for what the number is. Why would you publish a video that states Hedera has 20,000 followers? Like what an oversight and example of the kind of research that that person is doing. And they have such a huge following. It's crazy. In fact, the major issue here is when confronted with these inaccuracies, gaps, misinformation, right, about this network, the response from this individual was, quote, the HBAR folks are very toxic. I do my best to help people and share data to make decisions. But you try to disrespect me, I will block you. No time for toxicity. And that's really what it comes down to is like, you can't get into that fear mentality in a bear market or at any time. Um, and anyone is at risk of doing that. We can't wake up every day just assuming that Hedera is the best thing on the planet. You know what I mean? We have to each day have an open mind. That's how you get ahead in the technology space. That's how you make money. That's how you succeed is you have to be open to new technologies and opportunities and possibilities. And the fact that the thing that you are excited about just might not be exciting one day. Um, and I, I just say that to remind myself, you know what I mean? Like I'm a hash graph enthusiast. You know, I call myself a hash graph enthusiast and I'll call myself a Hedera maxi or, a, you know, or whatever, just because, you know, hash graphs, a technology, many L ones will use, Hashgraph. Not every Hashgraph will be run by Hedera. They will have all sorts of different governance models. It's just a great technology. I think that's going to make other networks like Solana, like Algorand, like Bitcoin better, right? Like Lehman Baird literally said, you know, Hedera is a trust layer for the internet or networks. And there are networks out there that need this kind of trust layer. Like what if we had a world where all of these networks that we look at as competitors were 10 times better, right? Hedera still has advantages over these networks, but it can offer things to the space. That's kind of what the founders of this network are about. Lehman is, you know, dedicating his life right now to DRAC, right? Decentralized custody, decentralized recovery. Um, it's just an open source project that every network's going to be able to use and it'll hopefully trigger a paradigm shift to the Web3 space. You will not have to worry about remembering your seed phrase anymore, and you will still have the same security. If you haven't had a chance to look into it, look up DREC from Swirls Labs. But that's what this is about. You know what I mean? It's like, where do we want to approach this from? And the challenge here is that folks from the other side, all of a sudden, right, just be, as a byproduct of Hedera growing in price and grabbing attention, as a disruptive technology is causing some disruption. And it's just unfortunate to see it happening. You know what I mean? It's like, and, and we've dealt with this before in the past, like we've the coin bureau and like all these different, you know, FUD milestones. Right. And a lot of people say, Hey, you know, it's a rite of passage. Maybe it's a bullish signal about Hedera. It just shows that we're grabbing attention. Great. You know, but I think it's important to understand this stuff because when it happens, Sorry, just taking a sip of my coffee. When it happens, it creates opportunity and windows of time where you can kind of see things you wouldn't see in a bull market. A great example is when we had that network hack um, on March 9th, right? Where the proxy servers had to be shut off for the main net. You know, just to be clear, you know, Hedera, the network was fine. Um, 
it was a function of network security and governance and there was no you know massive drop in price and everything was okay i think it was a drastic measure but i think that the alternative would have been worse but it was it wasn't the network going down i think that's another thing that people will you know bring up and refer to that you know hedera went down on march 9th then again it's just because this network is so different than blockchain because hashgraph is so different it's tough but when that happened you had this window of opportunity where all of these things about this network were just surfaced, these conversations about the, the, the technology. And I'll give you a great example. We learned some critical information about Avery Dennison's Atma IO use case. A lot of people always wondered why were transactions from the Avery Dennison use case so consistent and what would happen after the network came back online? right? Like transactions were shut off. No, no uh, outside application could communicate with the main net. Uh, the main net was still running fine, but they shut down the proxy. So, you know, the, the hackers trying to drain liquidity, we just wouldn't be able to. And we were wondering what's going to happen when it comes back online. Is Atma just going to have a flood of transactions coming in uh, did Atma have to shut down their use case? And we learned that Atma's actually developed kind of a tech, we'll call it a tech stack on their end, where they are logging transactions on their end, and then they send them to the Hedera network. And they almost have kind of like a volume knob where they can kind of turn it up and turn it down. So they have consistent flow to the network. So they might have really busy days, and then they might have really slow days. And this backlog of transactions will grow, and it will shrink, but the amount going to the network will be consistent so they can control their costs. They can keep tabs on those different types of things. They can do projections. And it was just this incredibly fascinating piece of knowledge and insight into a use case that I don't think we would have ever got if we didn't have that issue with the network, if we didn't have that exploit. And I look at things happening right now and we go, oh no. All this FUD is out there. All this misinformation is out there. People are going to have the wrong idea about this technology. This is going to hurt the adoption of this network. But also at the same time, we're starting to see these things. We had um, the one of the leaders at UCL, right, do a, a massive thread breaking down how the research was done for the UCL paper almost like the behind the scenes for a movie as a rebuttal to criticisms that we're talking about right now. So think about that. These, you know, you know, these people that will refer to as, you know, uh, doorknobs from other networks that have big followings that put out bad information about the network and frustrate people, you know, there is a silver lining to it you start to have these insights. You start to have these glimpses behind the scenes because when Hedera and the governing council and the community are kind of forced to validate what this is all about, you get some really interesting information. So it's an opportunity. There's, there's a lot of opportunity here. And I think that the wrong thing to do right now is get in a bummed out headspace about this and scroll through Twitter and see um, all maybe some, you know, like, oh, this person's saying that about, you know, Hedera or Hashgraph, and that's wrong, and this is wrong, and that's incorrect. These types of things are just what's going to happen. Like I said, it's always happened in technology. And if you maybe feel like you can't participate in these conversations because you don't know enough, or you just don't feel bold enough, or you feel like maybe you're going... Yeah, is is Hedera the best investment? Is this the network? Is there something better? That's a fantastic headspace to be in right now. It's a bear market. It's an opportunity to get into projects. And when you're switched on into that headspace, you can easily go into the fear, right? You can easily fall back on things that reinforce your viewpoints. Or you can kind of go, hey... Is this a signal that I should be looking at other things? You know, 
are the the are there some networks that do some things better than Hedera? Right? Spoiler: there are there are networks out there that do certain things better than Hedera. Um, there's just cool stuff, and there's cool conversations happening. And yeah, it's on the backdrop of people yelling at each other on X, right? The band formerly known as Twitter. But you know, at the same time, it, you just you start to see things. You start to see behind the scenes. The curtain gets pulled back. So it's an opportunity. So just look at it that way. Um, what's some other unfair things that they're talking about? Sorry, I keep going. I, I warned you guys. Like, I'm going to go in on this a little bit. I, again, I didn't want to go into the details, but I wanted to just actually take a look at this and what this is about. Um, there is, you know, a larger issue as well that I think has been going on a long time that is worth mentioning. That, again... When you have a disruptive technology, right? The you know the last week's episode was called disruption for this reason. And I talked about it quite a bit. Is you have a disruptive technology like Hedera, and you get disruption. And what that disruption looks like on the internet often is what we're seeing with these kind of FUD posts, right? But also sometimes it's literally just gatekeeping or deleting things, and unfortunately. Um, you know, Hashgraph, you know, the Hedera community literally will have posts, you know, removed from larger cryptocurrency subreddits. Um, and that's the case for a lot of smaller networks, unfortunately. Um, and some smaller networks have incredible innovations, much like Hedera. But the problem is when you go to share these insights or information or have these conversations, they're going to be silenced. They're going to be censored, right? Because it goes against certain interests. You know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and these larger networks don't just have a foothold on the markets. They have very powerful brands, right? There's a lot of brand power, mind share there. Um, and, you know, it's just not great to have a technology like Hedera threaten that, you know? And, and like I'm saying, if you... Go the other way and you cut, th th there's so many people in those ecosystems that go, hey, Hedera, what's this about? And it's like, eventually they just become a part of this community. They, they check out the ecosystem. It's, you know, it's very, it's super cool. They share, like most of what makes this network great, right, is other people coming in and, and kind of saying like, oh, here's a, a way you could do this. Or here's a way you could do that. Like a lot of the things that we have, even though Hashgraph is so different, a lot of the things that make Hedera similar to other networks are borrowed from other networks. You know what I mean? So there's a lot as well that Hedera can gain. And that's the really sad thing about this is like when you have these folks and these communities publishing this just inaccurate information, I, I think they're so much smarter than this. Like, I think they are so much smarter than this. I think that people look at these individuals and go, these guys are idiots, right? These people are dumb. Uh, they just don't know what they're doing and they're being lazy. And that could be true. But I, for a lot of kids, I just don't think it's true. I just think that they um, are afraid and they just stop where they are. They go with the information that they get, however outdated it is, and they just call it a day. And it's just, it sucks because what a loss for our network. Like Hedera isn't perfect. And people like this that have been around for so long that have so much knowledge about the history of this, this industry and so much experience and stuff like, you know, to kind of just, you know, write off something like that. Like I look at, you know, Charles Hoskins from from Cardano and it's like when he was like it's patented I'll never look into it you know it's I think genuinely the reaction from people is like that sucks you know what I mean because like not only do I think that Ashcraft technology can make other networks better but like we just have a lot to gain from other people diving into this stuff so that's the that's the real bummer for me um, and you know, of course there's bias. Um, and I just think, yeah, there's just so little value being created from these conversations sometimes other than, you know, an opportunity to kind of, as I said, like look behind the scenes and stuff like that. 
I just think that just in the big scheme of things, it's like what's actually, you know, happening other than more tribalism being formed. Like, you know, you have these arguably really smart people, right, doing a crappy job with this stuff, operating out a place of fear, putting other people that they that follow them in this kind of fear mentality. And you just create more of this tribalism. And it just it just turns into a, a mentality of, you know, you have to fail for me to succeed kind of thing. And it's just it's just that's ultimately, you know, looking at it from the outside, which makes a lot of people go the crypto is just a joke. You know what I mean? And it's this kind of joke behavior. You know, it's it sucks. Um, and it also just causes Hedera Maxis to become even more maxi, right? Like that's also something that I don't like to see is people in the Hedera Hashgraph community further retreating into that bubble as like a defense mechanism and going, actually, you know what? The truth is your stuff sucks and our stuff is the best. And it's And it's just like, one day we're talking about how we need to get outside the bubble and bridge the gaps, but like this kind of stuff just, I think pushes a lot of people back and causes a lot of people to retreat. So it's just, it's not good. It's just unfair to everybody. It's not good. And the way that the, a lot of these influencers are handling it is just nuts. And you could, you know, sometimes you go like, are they being paid for this or whatever, this and that it's just, you never know. Um, and then there's just some, actually silly dumb stuff which is like saying being green doesn't matter you know it's like that's just not true like i get that in web3 in the crypto space like a lot of those use cases are just not high throughput use cases um and it just it's just not you know being a you know carbon negative network doesn't really give you that much of an edge in in web3 like Totally. I get it. It's not a huge value proposition, but like, what about the rest of the world? Like, what about enterprise? Like, that's one of the most important value propositions. So it just, it also just brings into question, like, who's in the bubble? Like, if folks saw, if these influences and other networks just don't understand these things, it's like, there's a web three bubble too. It's like, and I think that Hedera is, again, something that makes the Hedera community so weird is that we're in this insular little bubble, this like hash graph bubble, which is weird. But also we talk so much about real world utility, applications, traditional finance, like a lot of the original Hedera investors are precious metal guys, like Mike Maloney, like, hello. So it's like, it's the Hedera community is so weird because we are in this kind of crazy web three bubble, but we also have broken out it's in the fabric of this community to ha to have this kind of broader scope. And it's just so weird that sometimes I see these arguments from the networks and it's always from within the crypto bubble. And I'm like, uh, it's just, it's silly. Um, it's just that lack of enterprise perspective, which is really weird. I just, um, you know, s sometimes it just feels like these partnerships and, and things in Web3 are just brands, you know, stickers being slapped on one thing and the other sticker being slapped on the other and some kind of partnership or whatever. And I like Hedera because um, real things are happening on the network. You know, I don't have to list them. We talk, I, I'm talking your ears about them costly, but it, to Hedera's detriment, they don't do that. They, you know, they don't have their name on a sports stadium. They don't do those things. Like, their slogan for a long time was all substance, no hype. Like how opposite of crypto can you get? You know, it's nuts, but it makes sense. It's counterintuitive. A counterintuitive approach often works. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, and it's, and also too, it has to be said, a lot of people just make things up. Like I've read things that, Folks on other networks will write about Hedera and Hashgraph and stuff. They just like to make things up wild. Um, but again, I think that it is just a product of the fact that Hashgraph as a technology is just so different. And certain aspects of the top technology just does not compute. Like you tell people it and they're just like, that makes no sense. There's no point of reference. Um, and it's just, again, it's a headwind when you have a disruptive technology you're going to cause disruption. And I think that really the bottom line here, 
before we move on is just, I mean, they are, these are technology communities advocating for and being excited about their, the, their favorite technology. And it's, that's happened ever since there was technology. Um, and we see it now, right? Like th there's this AI company, there's that AI company, there's this chip manufacturer, there's that chip manufacturer. There's, you know, it's, it's, there are preferences, there are alliances and allegiances and all these different types of things. It just happens with technology. So just remember that it's like, it's just, this aspect will not go away ever. Um, nobody's going to be holding hands, you know, at peace. Um, but we have to worry about the just void of just useless information. Um, the other thing too is like, I think a key takeaway here is something that I brought up before, but this is so important is people say, do your own research so much. Like I watch so many YouTube videos with these people and they're like, um, do your own research. Um, and then they'll just be like, I didn't look into this or I didn't look into that or don't bother with this or don't bother with that. They'll, they'll literally do a video saying like, I researched this network, but don't look into it. It's not worth it. It's just, it's weird. And also too, when you tell people do your own research, like how is anybody, how is any regular person, even somebody who is technically and financially and, you know, web three literate, like how are people supposed to do their own research? Um, with the just amount of just horrible information out there just being pumped out by influencers. Like that's the other thing that makes it so difficult is like, there's just so much noise and people are investing in things. They're being sold stuff. And it's just, it's insane to me to think that you can just tell somebody to do their own research, right? All, you know, always make sure you know, do your own research before buying something. It's just, you, it takes, if you're going to do your own research, like it takes a long time and it takes changing your viewpoints. And part of doing your own research is, is to, like sometimes like just failing at it, like just finding something that you might think is good and it's just not and moving on to the next thing. Like it's just a huge process. So it's just tough sometimes when I hear people go like, Oh, you got to do your own research. It's like, well, it's just hard, not easy. Like it's, it's, that's what makes this technology space so hard is the fact that you just can't get good information sometimes because of what we're talking about. Um, and this is like the early days of the industry and there isn't a lot of shared uh, semantics, right? Like we talked about, how the Hedera consensus service just doesn't make sense as a brand for that service. It just is the wrong name for it. Um, but there's so many other aspects of the Hedera network that don't share the same language as other networks. That, and that's something that is going to make things so difficult um, going forward. And just also the technology itself. Right? Like the fact that the tokens are minted right to the layer one protocol. It's like Okay, amazing. That is an amazing thing. But at the same time, it just doesn't make sense to a lot of people. It doesn't compute. So that's where a lot of this is just going to be driven from is like it just a lot of things that Hedera is doing to a lot of people just doesn't make sense until you really spend time to look into it. And who's spending time on things right now? Um, and yeah, the, you know, stay open-minded the other thing is we got to have some empathy. Like at the, at the other time too, it's like these aren't networks that we're arguing with. These are people, right? And a lot of these people are smart and have great resources. And it's just like, it, you know, it's just, you have to set the record straight. You have to make sure accurate info is out there. Sure. But at the same time, it's like, we have to be mindful of, um, you know, I think that the big problem here is people aren't like these folks that we're talking about. They're not asking the Hashgraph Hedera community questions. They're just throwing arguments at the community. It's just sucks. And it's like, I, I want to take that as a lesson. And for myself, you know, I, I, in the past have thrown jabs at other networks. I've had egg on my face, you know, Solana has gone down before things have happened with other networks. And I've kind of gone like, see, 
you know, on Hedera, you don't have this. And it's like, I kind of regret doing that. Like, I think instead, like seeing this kind of stuff play out, it makes me want to like, just not do it. And instead of going to another network and saying like, you guys, you know, do things this way. It's not as good. Like ask questions, be open. Right. And instead of poking holes in their network and saying like, you guys don't have finality, you guys aren't ABFT. Um, you guys, your fees are out of control, right? Like, Instead of poking holes, like let's fill them. Like we literally have a product, right? The Hedera network that is designed to help solve these problems on networks. It is the trust layer, right? So if we can kind of like have our rebuttals also offer solutions, that might be really interesting. You know what I mean? There's so many technically minded people in here, um, but why waste our time doing that? Because there was a thread published by Nick Poorman on this. He is uh, at Swirls Labs, right? Um, in the kind of development realm. And just, I wanted to wrap on this topic. I know we spent a lot of time on it, but it's just so important. Like when you have a situation where Hedera gains that spotlight and starts to have these conversations, I just want to share these perspectives because... I think that there's opportunity here sometimes. And one of these opportunities is like we talked about when these things happen, it forces the curtain to be pulled back a bit. So Nick Borman offered some critical insight and framing into these conversations from a technical perspective that are fantastic. And it was funny because when I shared his thread, I didn't know that he worked at Swirls. Um, he wrote it in a way that sounded like somebody that was just going, here are the problems with blockchain and what we have to solve that nobody talks about. We need to take this seriously. And I went, oh my God, I sent out a tweet. Um, I sent a tweet that says, this guy is going to love Hedera. Because I was like, oh my God, he's basically talking about this network that I love. Like, oh wow, like that's great. Like, you're going to love it too. He works at Swirls. And I was just like, what? That fuck like what did i do i got dms from people so it it is probably in my top five most embarrassing tweets but nonetheless i wanted to share some insights from his tweets i think it's the perfect way to wrap this up fud aside arguments aside speculation aside this ultimately comes down to technology and what nick says is non- Programmers often discuss and compare blockchains based on superficial issues like energy consumption and transaction speed, you know, AKA me. Um, engineers typically avoid these discussions because there are deeper, more technical problems to address with blockchains. And that really perked my ears up. I was like, okay, this is a pretty fresh take. Um, and there, he highlighted major concerns with blockchains. And I love that he published this not as like a Hedera thing. This is just like helpful knowledge for everybody and almost like just a list of things that Hedera as a network could do to like help every network be amazing. So data storage issues, high transaction speeds, right? TPS resolve a lot of data. Many blockchains don't have a plan for when the data becomes too much to store. These blockchains often promise to store data indefinitely after a one-time fee, which is not sustainable. Storing vast amounts of data is expensive, as seen with major data platforms like AWS, Databricks, and Snowflake. There are leadership problems. Blockchains that require a leader to be elected can face fairness issues, and these leader-based systems can become corrupt or influenced by greed. Um, so on those two points, it's like, you just kind of go, well, yeah, there's just some inf inherent flaws with blockchain technology. Um, and then centralization and latency. Some blockchains require low latency and are often based on a single data center. This centralization contradicts the decentralized nature of blockchains. Many popular blockchains have their main nodes, which are responsible for processing transactions, in the same location, making them centralized. Leader-based blockchains spend a lot of time on voting processes, which slows them down. 
Sending data over a network is slow compared to CPU speeds, making voting processes inefficient. Physical limitations, right? Data can't be sent over networks faster than the speed of light, which poses a challenge for blockchains. And basically the conclusions are kind of blockchains face challenges related to data storage, leadership, centralization, and physical data transfer limits. And the community should focus on addressing these real issues instead of superficial debates. That was kind of the take from Nick Pullman. And I kind of was like, that's a great summary. That's a great thing to ground us all. It's not about Hedera. Because you could look at that thread as a thread from a Swirlt employee talking about things that don't work with blockchain and going and, you know, Hedera is leaderless. Hedera charges rent for storage. It doesn't have these issues. Hedera is, you know, um, geographically decentralized. Um, they, they don't use AWS for all their nodes. We've talked about that before. You can look at it as a thread kind of knocking block, or you can look at it as a thread of kind of like, oh, here's some problems that need to be solved. Like, Here's this technology blockchain that's used by so many people. This is going to be around forever. It's beautiful. Blockchain is a beautiful technology. It's created a whole industry. And blockchain is going to keep getting better. And maybe a next step in blockchain improving is a network like Hedera just doing some of these things. Like, can it be applied to make some of these other networks better that so many people depend on like that'd be amazing so that's how i look at it is i kind of go like sure we've got these problems this this kind of threat is fantastic to ground us all but like yeah let's fix these things so that's basically my thoughts on this situation right now i just like so much love and appreciation to the algorand community to the solana community to the bitcoin community to all these communities involved in these discussions like I think that, you know, the Hedera community has to remember these things, that Hedera is very different, that the brand of Hedera is very aligned with enterprise. That's not great for retail. You can't blame people on other networks looking at Hedera in the way that they look at them at. And we can't always just approach it from a place of like, your network is not as good in these areas and our network is. It's just about perspective, understanding that just this is the way things are. At the end of the day, don't feed the trolls. That's what's going to get us. Is like some people, unfortunately, are just going to lie and spread misinformation and can't feed the trolls. It's the it's the it's the you know it's the rule as old as time on the internet. Um, and unfortunately, I see a lot of you know I dare community members and community members from other networks just going nuts on Twitter threads, and it's just like there's no there's no point. Um, sometimes there just isn't a point. So I want to say like, let's come together, let's get along, but it's like, it's technology. It's just, that's not going to happen, especially in a bear market right now. And if there is a disruptive technology, there's disruption. Now we have to, we have a lot to talk about. We're going to, we're going to be talking about, um, you know, the, uh, the governing council minutes, um, some exciting things have been happening on mainnet. Um, Citadel Wallet, Dovu, we're going to be talking about all this stuff. Um, something else exciting that happened recently was I minted a, an NFT called Hello Future. It's a song, it's a multi file NFT. Um, and I uh, just wanted to take a minute, just huge thank you to the community. Um, hundreds of people um, have minted it. Um, it's kind of becoming a little bit of an anthem, uh, which is really cool. Um, and, you know, the re really the reason that we want to do it is we want to, we want to take, and when I say we, you know, my creative firm, Dirks to the Davenport, you know, with my, with my business partner, Joshua, like what we want to do is we want to put out these products that kind of show people what's possible with NFTs. You can have multiple files inside of an NFT and you can have like music, videos, 3D collectibles, images, like you can do all these different types of things and also have tons of information in it and make it this really amazing product um, and, you know, be able to get cool music for a few dollars. Like, you know, be able to have hundreds of people mint this, you know, new NFT that, you know, for, for a couple dollars, like that's just cool. 
Um, and it's to raise awareness for HIP657, which is um, mutable metadata for NFTs on Hedera, right? The ability for a creator to change the NFT in your wallet later on. Um, that is a powerful ability that's going to be coming to Hedera. Um, it's going to help artists and it's going to help all sorts of different use cases, enterprise, everything. Imagine the power of being able to put NFTs out there and change them later on without smart contracts. That's incredible. And of course, like you'll still be able to make mut uh, immutable NFTs, right? That you can't change, you know, because for many people, it's very important that when they purchase an NFT, the creator not be able to ever change it. It's it, This is about adding a feature. So that's huge. HIP657, tweet about it, share it, make some noise because we want to move it up the roadmap. It's not coming until the end of the year, or early next year. We need it to come sooner. So make some noise about it. That's partially why we did this song, just because we want to make people aware of it. But just a huge thank you and shout out to um, people minting that and enjoying it. It's just been amazing to see it out there. Also, um, a huge shout out to supporters of the show. I mean, the Hashgraph Enthusiast News and Rumors Show averages about 500 listeners every week um, on you know spaces here and also on other platforms um, like Apple Podcasts and stuff like that. And over the years, I've covered every major news event, unpacked almost every juicy rumor, um, and have had a lot of um, awesome conversations with many guests. Like I said last week, I had Solo C. Seon from Galaxy. Um, and I've been able to do it all live. You know, I love to do this show live. I could do it pre recorded, but I just dig it. I just love doing stuff live. You never know what could happen. Sometimes I just don't plan on having guests. Like for this show, I don't plan on having guests, but sometimes I'll, you know, if the conversation needs it, I love being able to like bring somebody up and bring him into the show. Um, so if you'd like to support the show, consider making an H bar contribution. Um, and many folks in the community have done this. I actually just reached a milestone with the show, uh, to get some equipment. That's one thing I've been waiting on. The bear market's been tough, of course, but, um, got a plan upping the quality of the show, new microphone, all that good stuff. So that's been really great. Just hit a milestone. I think we're almost at 7,000 H bar raised for the show, which is incredible. Um, so really appreciate the support. You can send a contribution to enthusiast.hbar using your Hedera wallet. Uh, I get fun memos sometimes, which I actually really appreciate. I mean, people will send messages like, oh, I love the show or stuff like that in, you know, literally like even a couple HBAR add up. Like some, you know, some folks just send a couple HBAR and a fun memo. Like it's just, that's what's cool about this network is we don't have the cast fees. So if you want to throw, you know, like 50 cents to the show, like it just, it adds up. That's, 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 what's great about this stuff. Um, and you know, the show's full Hedera address is in the podcast show notes, YouTube description. I just put it in the mega thread at the top of the jumbotron. Um, get all the info you need about the show at it's brandond.com slash H bar. If you're listening elsewhere, leave a review, leave a comment, et cetera. It helps out the show. You can also send me a tip on galaxy. How cool is that? I've been getting some tips on Galaxy. You like literally use your credit card. It sends me crypto. It's crazy. I mean, all running on Hedera. Uh, what a time to be alive. Now, let's dive into Dovu. This is huge news. Uh, Dovu has released probably the biggest piece of news in the history of their project, the most consequential update um, that I've seen from Dovu. And it basically there's there's a few events that have happened um and we're we're, we're going to talk about it but essentially the Coles notes here is Dovu is going to be making a new token right their token right now is um token symbol DOV right Dove and their new token will be DO uh, DOVU right Dovu um and so that's huge for a few reasons the number one reason is right now Dovu is an ERC-20 native token. So all the Dovu that you have in your hash pack, that's all bridged, right? That's not native to Hedera. It has all sorts of weird keys on it that make it difficult for them to get it listed in other exchanges. There's all sorts of wonky things about the bridged version of Dovu. The Dovu in your hash pack wallet like isn't 
real Dovu. The real Dovu lives on Ethereum. So that's the first thing. Um, and what they want to do is they want to get rid of that one, make a brand new one. And instead of doing a billion Dovu, do 10 billion Dovu. So if you own, let's say, 1% of the Dovu supply, currently, when they do the 10 billion Dovu, you'll get 1% of that supply. So put simply, let's say you have 50,000 Dovu right now. You will soon have 500,000 Dovu worth roughly the same. That's kind of what this breaks down to. And it's huge. So let's go over a few key points from this update. Um, and they did a community call as well, a live community call. There's two tidbits from that that I want to share. But basically, there's a proposal that was published. There's a vote that you can vote on whether you want the project to move through with this, yes or no. And I'll just quickly go through the proposal. So the abstract was um, a shift from the current Dovu token to the new one, like I was saying. It's an airdrop. So you basically associate a new token ID and you will be airdropped your portion of the Dovu supply. There is a snapshot that was already taken and there will be another snapshot taken. Um, and... The, the airdrops will also um, be able to be claimed from EVM networks like Ethereum, BSC, and Polygon. So what's the motivation? Why are they doing this? So Dove token has been in circulation for over six years and expanded to several networks. The expansion introduced risks due to potential bridge exploits. There's an exploit on the Poly network and it highlighted vulnerabilities of bridge tokens. The proposal aims to simplify the token structure and align it with Dovu's current strategic focus. And to be fair, Dovu token was created before the Hedera token service existed. So people will go, well, why didn't they just mint this on Hedera? It's like, well, because the project was created before that was even possible. So I view this as a natural milestone in this project, but it's big and it raises a lot of questions. So What's the key points from this? So the current Dove holders with whitelisted Hedera accounts will receive an automatic airdrop. So go read, there's a, there, there's a, you know, go to the Dove website. There's a proposal that has all the details there. Their discord is useful as well. There's going to be some key dates and information within the coming weeks that you're going to want to keep track of if you are a Dove holder. Um, and just know that stuff is going on right now. There's snapshots being taken. All sorts of things are happening. Um, so be aware, like know where your holdings are, um, and check it out and see what's going on. Um, holders on EVM networks, right? So people holding Dovu, um, outside of Hedera can claim their Dovu tokens on the Hedera network. So if you don't have a hash pack wallet or anything like that, now's the time to go check that stuff out. Um, the supply is going to be, you know, 10 X as we, as we talked about. And basically there's two other, um, aspects to this. That's very interesting. Um, two speculative things. So on the community call, um, Matt, right. CTO at Dovu, chief technical officer shared two insights. Their broader vision is to become the universal infrastructure for digital digital green credits. Um, so what does that mean? Um, basically streamlining the process of tokenizing these credits, doing all the paperwork, all these different types of things. And Matt said it very succinctly where he said, I, I have to have Matt on the show soon. Heads up. He's coming on the show. I'm going to talk to him about all this stuff. Uh, but he said they want to be like the type form for onboarding credits with AI. So for people who don't know about type form, it's like a web form. It's kind of like Google forms, but like way better. And it's super slick and amazing and fast and mobile friendly. And so thinking about that, you know, becoming the type form of onboarding credits with AI, like I get that anyone who kind of invested in Dovu and kind of in this space kind of goes, Oh, okay. That's very compelling. And the other insight is, um, Something that's hard to articulate and very, 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 very speculative, but it was insinuated on the show that the amount of Dovu in circulation must be higher to ensure that these can be low. And 
I want to give an uh, uh, an analog to this. So on the call, Matt basically said, if we have a billion Dovu, like we do currently, and eight decimal points on the token, the 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 fees through our network, we want them to be low. And for example, if the price of a single Dovu token would go up enough, they're like in extreme cases may not be enough decimal points, like to put it plainly. Um, and so increasing the supply to 10 billion makes that more manageable and gives you that additional headroom. And so it just gets your brain going. And I want to, I want to highlight that Lehman said the same thing. Um, initially I think that they wanted to do like 50 billion H bar or 5 billion H bar. It was something, it was a similar situation to Dovu where they wanted to do a smaller amount of H bar. And they did 50 billion. And the and the reasoning Lehman gave was he said, well, we only have eight decimal points. So if an H bar were to go up to a certain price at a certain point, you wouldn't have enough decimal points. And it just gets you thinking, you kind of go like, well, how high do they foresee H bar going? You know, and with by that same logic, how high do they see Dovu going? Like, that's just where your brain goes. And I don't want, like... It was interesting to me just because it was put out there, because it was the exact same thing that Lehman said. It be just it just because it gets your brain to go there, like it just makes your brain go there. Um, and you know, it's just pure speculation. But it was just in that community call on Discord, and it just when when Matt said it right away, it made me think of Lehman talking about that exact thing. And it makes my head go to the same place. I'm obviously going to ask him about it when I have him on the show. But that was really, you know, that was really those two key insights from um, that announcement that is, you know, just important. Um, Mance appeared on a little uh, YouTube show to talk about the Fed Now news. You know what's so weird is we have like, um, we have community members and and projects in Hidera like, being featured on BitBoy and like on these massive shows. And I'll watch like Lehman and Mance be guests on these shows that have like 30 viewers on the live stream or something. And I'm like, who's bo like who's booking these guys on media appearances? Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. They have really great media appearances. And also, you know, it it is important to be on shows where, you know, you have you know, lower amounts of viewers, you know, small community shows that goes a long way. And also, to be fair, the drop news, I think, caught everyone off guard. So not a lot of time to prepare. But still, it's like weird. Uh, but on Mance, it was kind of clear that he was a little frustrated about the rollout of the announcement and the fact that the Fed now website listed drop as a partner and no one really knew. Like, I, I, I got that feeling of kind of frustration from like even uh, CEO of drop, Sashil and, and Mance. Like, it was just kind of, it was kind of like, yeah, you know, we didn't have time to prepare. We didn't know the news was coming out because it's big news. It drove the price. I imagine that Hedera and the H Bar Foundation and Drop like had a massive coordinated like press blitz around this, just prepared and to see the news go out and the community grab onto it and they're kind of just like, well, there's no point now. Like probably a bit of a bummer, probably some wasted marketing dollars, but it's like it just came across like that to me. It came across like they were planning an epic push and it just was like oh leaked out so you know obviously some disappointment um but you know both sushil and mance talked about the implications of this use case and the key point that i think a lot of people grab onto is the fact that banks would create accounts for their customers and those accounts would be mainnet accounts on the hedera network which is exciting and both sushil and mance say that we can expect an influx of millions of accounts being created on Hedera as this FedNow integration takes hold, which is very exciting. And Mance also on the interview, on this interview in particular, um, basically was saying, you know, millions of transactions um, would be flowing through per day from this use case. So again, not a ton of clarity on this. We're still learning a whole lot. Um, and there's also something interesting um, about this that I think a lot of people just didn't know about 
and just missed the radar. And I want to learn a little more about it. This was shared on the Hedera community subreddit. And basically, it was the fact that there is another potential Hedera application that is also a service provider for FedNow in the same way that Drop is. It's called Capco, right? C-A-P-C-O, which is a WePro company, aka WePro, the governing council member. So there is a company from WePro that is a service provider on the FedNow website in the same capacity as Drop. So are we to look at this as a second Hedera um, project listed as a service provider for, for FedNow? Are there potentially two entry points for Hedera into this use case? Fascinating stuff. Um, again, I haven't had a ton of time to look into it. It just kind of popped on my radar, I, as I think as it had for most people, but we've got a second player and I want to know more about that. That's fascinating. It's not just drop. So FedNow has been crazy. I talked about it a lot on the last episode. Um, so, you know, there it is. Now, let's talk about the Governing Council meeting minutes. So for folks unfamiliar, the Hedera Governing Council, um, and just a quick shout out if you're listening, the more the merrier, share the spaces. If you have something interesting, leave a comment. The little comment button is on the bottom right of the spaces. Let's get some more folks in here. Um, it's a vibe. We're sharing the knowledge. We're spreading the knowledge. Um, I'm having my third coffee of the day, right? I'm jacked. We're talking about Adira. Um, and the governing council meets every month. They have meeting minutes and it is the most boomer thing on the planet, but it's transparency. It's professional enterprise transparency. We are seeing what they're talking about. Um, and we get some insights from that. So they publish the meeting minutes usually a month behind. We just got the one for July last month. Uh, so what's going on? What's notable? Um, they should... Th what is Ubisoft doing? Ubisoft has been to like three governing council meetings, I think. They have the worst attendance of anybody. And they just... I don't know what Ubisoft is doing. Um, and... On interviews, I think Matt Walker Williams did an interview with Mance recently. We spoke about it. And Mance mentioned specifically, without mentioning Ubisoft, he said there are certain governing council members that just don't participate in governance. Um, And I was just like, oh, okay. And he just said, like, listen, this is how things go. Like when you have a big group of people, you're just going to have people that just suck. And I was like, okay, like, it makes sense. It's a bummer, but it makes sense. I mean, how can we expect every governing council member to be incredible? Like, you're going to have some governing council members that just aren't good. And that's why they're term limited. That's why they aren't guaranteed a forever spot on the governing council. And Ubisoft, what are you doing? Um, now... The most interesting tidbit from the Governing Council meeting minutes was Brett, right, the chair for the board, said, um, so he, the, I'll, I'm just going to read a quote from the meeting minutes. It makes more sense. So, quote, Brett M. updated council members about a prospective member with whom the council has been engaged in lengthy discussions. Brett summarized the membership committee's ultimate determination that the prospective member did not satisfy Hedera's objective criteria for council membership and that no exception to the criteria applies in this case. As such, the membership committee decided not to move the candidate forward in the governing council membership process. Shot down. Denied. So what happened? Well, in the June governing council meeting minutes, we learned that there was a, a the council went into an executive session, which basically meant like secret time, and they talked about a prospective governing council member that wanted to join the council, and the result was they were just they were like, nope, you don't make the cut, 
and Mance talked about this, that the governing council has become more and more, um, as, as the governing council is fortified and grown and their credibility has been established, they can be more demanding of requirements for new members. And it's clear that even close to the finish line, you can get denied. And we saw that right in the meeting notes that there was a member over the last 30 to 60 days that was at the finish line and was denied because, quote, they did not satisfy Hedera's objective criteria for council membership. And most importantly, quote, no exception to the criteria applies in this case. So who was it? I'd love to find out who it was. Clearly, we're not going to, but there's a lot of speculation out there of who it could be. Sorry, let's have another sip of my coffee. And yeah, it's a mystery. Also, too, um, there was payments of, uh, surround, uh, d conversations surrounding how the board is paid, right? Because some of these people are paid a lot of money. And so Tom S. talked about this. And some key insights to this section was Tom talked about changing how Hedera directors get paid every year or sorry, every quarter. Most companies pay their directors a fixed amount, but Hedera has more complex systems. Hedera's board meets 24 times a year, right? So that's every two weeks. And there are other smaller group meetings too. Directors get paid not just for meetings, but also for other tasks they do for Hedera. What might change? Directors won't get paid based on attending certain meetings or signing certain documents or transactions. So, um, that is strange. So what I take away from that is the amount of meetings and, uh, and um, si signatures that they would do would inform the amount of compensation they received and the new change would kind of decouple that. That's weird. Um, also, all directors will need to join at least one smaller group or committee um, within the board. So... Um, kind of encouraging more involvement, weird. Um, also too, they talked about possibly changing the payment amount in the future. Um, these changes will be voted on by the council members online. Um, and they also kind of were changing committee rules. So they discussed changes to the rules for Hedera's smaller, you know, Hedera's smaller committees. Um, last year they decided on some changes but never put them into action. And we kind of went over those in previous episodes. Now... They want to bring in some of those changes, but keep the old rules too. So it sounds like the governing council is being more liberal with the controls they have. And there is definitely debate on the decisions they're making. Um, there's, it's easy to sit on the fence with this one. There's so much going on. But what I will say is it's great to see that happening and it's nice to be able to read about it in a in a, as transparent fashion as we can have like it's useful to know this stuff is going on um and the council will discuss more about how these committees make decisions and the rules will be voted on by the council members online so i think there's a new kind of e-ballot component to this so anyways governing council meeting minutes show that um the governing council is um, expressing their control more, their authority more. Um, and I think it is in the best interest of the network, you could argue. I think that a lot of decisions they're making are to um, go in that pathway of decentralization, but it depends on which lens you look at it through. A lot of these things, you could argue, there is a consolidation of power and resources. These are, after all, corporations um, working together in a consortium and you know then you flip back and you go well it's term limited and not everyone's going to agree on this stuff so it's going to be interesting to see what's going on they're going to be voting on it um, it's clear that there is debate and disagreement and not everything is pushed forward heck in may in june there were discussions around contributing a billion more H bar to initiatives and the governing council was like why do we need these? We need a better reason. Uh, so there's clearly pushback and debate and disagreement, and that is good to see. 
Um, now, the other thing to talk about is something huge that has happened with the network. Um, and we talk about the HBAR price going up. Um, there's actually been a huge spike in account creation. Tens of thousands of accounts being created. Um, I think that it might be related to the slime world stuff, but who knows? Um, it could be related to many different things. Um, you know, social engagement is up. So many things are up, but most importantly, something's gone down. Something's gone down guys. And that is the, the time to consensus. Um, the time to consensus was rocking at like five or six seconds, which meant a, the network would come to consensus on a transaction in about five or six seconds. Um, that little spinning wheel in your hash pack or on your uh, marketplace or decks that would spin and spin and spin and tell you the transaction's completing, that'll happen faster because the time to consensus has dropped under four seconds, which is insane. I can't express how crazy that it is. And it's because there is a brand new gossip protocol. Now, this isn't the gossip about gossip um, thing that makes Hedera unique. This is a gossip algorithm that kind of all networks share. Every network has a gossip algorithm. Hedera has just made a really, really good one. And this was actually placed onto the network earlier this year. And it caused a lot of volatility in the time to consensus. So the time to consensus was, yeah, it's five to six seconds kind of, but then the upgrade went live and it went lower, but it was all over the place. It was like eight seconds and then two seconds and then six seconds and then four seconds. It was all over the map. It was unstable and they rolled it back and they kind of went, okay, we've got a really great gossip algorithm and it lowers the time to consensus, but it's just all over the map. And we, it's just not ready. And they've redeployed it now. And the time to consensus has been reduced, which is telling me something incredibly important. And I'm going to get a little speculative here, but I think this is incredibly important. And I think a big tell that something huge is going to happen. Earlier this year, Lehman Baird was on an interview and he was asked about concerns around the fact that when more TPS is driven through the network, time to consensus will go up, right? Things will operate slower. And what solutions does Hedera have in place to prevent that from happening? This is a concern. And Lehman responded, it's easy. Um, we can work on these updates and apply them and lower the time to consensus. Um, and that can be done. But it's just not a priority right now. Um, it's okay if time to consensus goes up. We're focused on other things right now. And he says, when there comes a time when we think there's going to be massive increases of transactions and massive scaling of the network um, and potentially breaching that 10,000 transaction limit, we'll, we'll, we're going to start to optimize time to consensus. Um and that's what they've done. And there's a few things that Hedera has done that I'm going to go out on a limb here. That the, as I was saying at the beginning of the show, some things are changing. Things feel different. Um, it feels like there is preparation for big things. Um, we see crazy TPS on the test net. We see big spikes on the main net, massive use case announcements, real use case announcements, and these network upgrades that kind of seem unnecessary right now. And I kind of go, it feels like there is preparation being done for a massive step function. That's what it feels like. We're hearing a lot of talk around these next six to 12 months um, in regards to the drop fed now news about these millions of accounts or a sharp increase in TPS, these things are being talked about as if they're happening in the next six to 12 months. And you could easily say, no, they're not 
right? Because it hasn't been true in the past. But this upgrade to the network, that's a lot of work and it's live and it's incredibly impressive and it is overkill. We don't need it right now, but will we? And that's really where my brain goes at. And that's why this is so important is it's not just crazy that the time to consensus is really low. It's what it means based off what Lehman said and in conjunction with other things that we've been seeing. It just is another tick in the box for a new step function. So um, that's incredibly exciting. Um, that's not a speculative thing. That's an upgrade that's been done to the network. And it just creates more speculation around it. Um, so, yeah, there are uh, rumors and we're going to get back on the news. Um, the H Bar Bull had a great episode on Friday with an uh, awesome conversation with Rob Allen, as usual, but also kind of some, some other, you know, cool things. Um, I'm actually going to be on, I think, the next episode of the H Bar Bull show. I'm going to be talking about some projects I've been working on. I'm going to talk about this show. I'm going to talk about my creative firm. I'm going to be talking about a lot of the work I've been doing in the ecosystem. So check out my interview next week on, or I guess this week, if you're listening to the recording, check it out. H Barble Friday um, should be good. And the H Barble had a couple of interesting things in this episode. Number one was he talked about that t-shirt that he wears. Um, that has kind of that deck of cards, right? You see those four cards um, and it's like, you know, Hedera. And he said that on the back of the shirt, there's a fifth card. And the meaning behind that fifth card is almost like a trick up the sleeve. And um, Zepsi, who kind of is uh, brand in the H bar bull, his co-host um, Zepsi, also another community legend shout out. Um, he, they actually, you know, on the last week's episode, they actually played the Hello Future music video for our NFT. They played it at the end of the episode, and Zepsi actually did a really great job talking about um, kind of multi-file NFTs and kind of what the possibilities are. So, like, you know, love those guys. But Zepsi was um, talking about that kind of hidden card up the sleeve, and he's like, that's one aspect of it there that's crazy is it doesn't really specialize in one industry or one application, it kind of works for everything. Um, it's still in beta as a network. There's lots of work to be done, sure. But the foundation, the scaffolding is set up in a way where Hedera is going to be able to capture opportunity in any market um, that would utilize a DLT. So that's kind of that fifth card, ace up the sleeve, which is uh, really interesting. Um, the other thing too is I want to bring up something like also related to the H bar bull show. He had, I think two weeks ago, he had Shane and Elaine from the H bar foundation on the show. And he asked Shane predictions on five years into the future with Hedera. And Shane mentioned something that he said, you know, my prediction is this and that you can go back and watch that episode of his. I actually talked about this on a previous episode of my show, but um, Shane mentioned something specifically where, where he said predictions aside, we are also working on things that could obliterate those predictions, which means um, far exceed those numbers and what we predict for the network. So just again, feeding into that narrative of that trick up the sleeve, what I've been talking about, just again, that that energy that's there. It feels like something's big is coming. Uh, but they also chat with Rob Allen and Rob Allen was asked a few key questions and provided some answers. I wanted to kind of touch on those just because they were so valuable. So um, Rob Allen was asked, and again, Rob Allen um, was uh, at FPOS on the Governing Council. He went to the HBAR Foundation. Now he's at the Hashgraph Association. He was asked, why would MasterCard wind down their blockchain, right? Because there was MasterCard Providence, the use case FSCO, Fresh Supply Co., was the largest MasterCard Providence user. They are migrating to Hedera now. That's been in the headlines recently. But why would MasterCard sunset their Providence blockchain? Would a credit card, or sorry, why would a credit card use a public chain over a private chain? And so Rob Allen said years ago, corporates thought they would need private blockchain tech. 
they have largely failed. And he says, friends, his, his friends at Oracle have struggled to bring permission blockchains to the market. Most of the businesses using the IBM Hyperledger blockchains have migrated off. MasterCard made the Providence supply chain uh, blockchain, but ultimately sunset it. And this is something interesting because I wanted to reference an interview that Max Walker Williams did with Jordan Freed from Immutable Holdings, originally from Hedera. Now, I mean, everyone has their thoughts on Jordan Freed. Uh, there's a lot of controversy around his NFT.com project and how that was handled. Um, but in his interview, he mentioned kind of a really interesting tidbit along these lines of public versus private um, networks. And the fact that originally, according to Jordan Freed, that Lehman and Mance's vision was not to have a public network. And they had to be convinced to create a public network. And so if you look at what Rob Allen is saying about a lot of corporates saw private blockchains as the way forward and it didn't work, I mean, very easily Hedera, or sorry, Swirls could have just not succeeded if they went that strategy. A public network was the right strategy. And according to Jordan Freed, it wasn't Lehman Romance's approach. So um, that was just something interesting I thought I'd highlight. Um, and kind of, you know, it's crazy, this journey. Um, he also, Rob Allen also mentions more specifically on FSCO, right? Fresh, fresh supply, the, the, the big new use case, um, booting up on Hedera. Um, they're going to be developing add-ons and plugins and they have those integrations with the MasterCard payment gateway services. He said, MasterCard has announced some stuff, but he's going to leave that for another day. Um, we, I actually posted this, the MasterCard CEO, um, made a post on Twitter where he said, quote, we're partnering with several, uh, central banks to help them research new digital currencies projects. It starts with understanding what they want to achieve with this technology, then building it in transparency, consumer privacy, and scalability. Uh, we're working towards these goals with a new CBDC partner program with MasterCard teaming up with a handful of key blockchain Web3 payments players so we can learn from each other. Um, and there's a few interesting things from that tweet by the MasterCard CEO. Um, so number one is MasterCard is already partnered with EM Tech, right? EM Tech is the CBDC sandbox built on Hedera. Um, I've had Carmel Cadet, the CEO of EM Tech, on the show as a guest uh, recently, so go listen to that episode. Um, but they are partnered there. Also, in the tweet from the MasterCard CEO, he specifically mentions, um, you know, Ripple, Consensus, um, Fireblocks, but also Idemia. And Idemia is a use case for CBDCs and a company focused on that that is building on Hedera as well. So multiple connections there um, and obviously MasterCard throwing their weight into the CBDC space. So, and we have Rob Allen kind of teasing that it's a big deal, but won't share any details. So he's, it's clear big things are brewing, just further adding to this narrative that we've been talking about on the show. And also asked a question regarding Hyundai and, and, and uh, Kia. He said, and I love this quote, he said, HCS, right, the Hedera Consensus Service, is the gateway drug into Web3 for enterprise. You know, he says that the HCS service is so appealing for enterprise, that's what they want to start with. But once they build the tooling to integrate that, everything else is easier. So HCS is the gateway drug for these enterprises in H to Hedera. So I thought that was just so creative and cool. Um, and I love that approach. Um, and he said, we're going to see some high TPS use cases going live over the next six to 12 months. Again, right? Again, this six to 12 months thing brought up. And we look at that reduction in time to consensus, all of these different things. It's just, it just feels like there's something new happening that's huge. Um, he was also asked about the Shinhan Bank and the FedNow drop stuff. Um, and he said he's been itching to talk about it. 
um, on the Shinhan Bank stablecoin remittances stuff that we talked about on previous episodes. Go back and listen to those. It's brandond.com slash hbar. Uh, but they used the Swirls Labs full stack stablecoin accelerator, which is a SOC2 compliance EVM compatibility, fraud management. It basically, that stablecoin accelerator has all the things that banks need built in. Um, and this infrastructure is being put in place. And I think Brandon, the HBAR bull kind of hit on this really well. He said, once this infrastructure is in place, that kicks open the door for everything. And over these years, we've watched the Guardian get built out. We've watched these proof of concepts for stablecoin international remittance. Um, all of these massive, massive use cases that are going to take a long time to develop. That infrastructure is being put into place. And again, once it's in place, that kicks the doors open. So that's so, so exciting to see these things coming together. And <clears throat> he basically also said that, you know, the drop announcement blindsided them. Um, and again, another individual just basically saying up front, you know, this news blindsided us. So I think that it was the drop news was great and the price of H bar went up, but I really think that it was a missed opportunity. I really think that Hedera had something special planned for that, that would have created a lot more buzz and it, it leaked and it just wasn't possible. So I actually think that there is a genuine bummed outedness, um, regarding that. Um, and basically Rob Allen said this point blank. He said, if you connect the dots, the world we've been describing is emerging and that's it right there. Um, that's what we're talking about is these crazy, uh, idealistic goals that Hedera has to be the trust layer of the internet. Um, this world that's been described is emerging and that's exciting. Um, and it's a little scary because a lot of the things that were talked about, like also were like, not great. Like Lehman being like, yeah, you know, 98% of the stuff that we have is gonna, you know, die. And it's like, okay, that's scary. Um, but sure. You know, like he's like, there's gonna be a handful of networks. Um, not everyone's gonna make it. So it's not just good things. It's, you know, a little freaky, um, but that's the H bar bull show. Lots of great insights on that. Um, and thank like, thanks everyone for sticking around. Um, I know I talk a lot about, and I kind of like goof on myself with the show that it's so long, but I kind of think people like the longer shows a little bit and it just has to happen. Like I don't cover all of the week's news. I just can't. Um, but I also get a lot of feedback about the show that, what makes this show unique is that we kind of go in depth on things and I approach it from a perspective of like people who aren't in the mix a lot. Like I picture people listening to this show, like I picture the guy listening to it, you know, just on the weekend, um, chilling out at home and he holds some H bar and he just kind of, he wants to tune in and just kind of like, you know, what's new, like what's going on, you know, what should I be interested in? And, I kind of want to approach it from that perspective of like, here's what's going on. Here's my thoughts on it as a kind of person that's been in the space a long time. Um, not all of my takes are going to be correct. And you, you know, you got to take them for what they're worth, but it's just, you know, I want to provide a little more of a serious take on things and uh, just holistically just kind of look at everything. And, um, you know, I want to do it just for the everyday person. You know, it's sure it's, this is on, you know, spaces and the web three communities on spaces, but the show is also on YouTube and Apple podcasts and Google podcasts and Spotify. And, you know, it's like, it's just making it accessible and just as educational as I can make it, you know? And so appreciate everyone listening and tuning in and stuff. It's great. Um, and speaking of, you know, kind of looking at the bigger scale of things, um, the Bharat blockchain Yatra, AKA, um, the, uh, the, the blockchain, uh, you know, tour basically, um, is massive and quote unquote powered by Hedera. And this is India's largest blockchain confluence ever. It's basically a tour through the provinces and it is, oh, sorry, the estates. And it's going, it's a seven month tour across 18 states. It's backed by the government. 
Um, the Hashgraph Association is the lead sponsor. They're going to interact with 50,000 developers in India. They're going to be training them on Hedera. There's going to be hackathons and prizes. The biggest prize is three quarter million dollars. This is a big deal. Like India is the most populous country on earth. Um, and it's a place where there is a technology explosion. Um, I work with folks in India and there's just so much creativity happening. There's just so much cross chain magic. Like it's just crazy. It's just exciting. And to know that, you know, Hedera and the Hashgraph Association is going in heavy in that space just makes me so happy because what a great technology for that, um, for that, for that um, economy to grab onto. Like just amazing. It's just, I think this is going to have an outsized effect on growth of the network and just um, so exciting. And again, Rob Allen spoke to this and he said that we should quote, buckle up and expect some incredible innovation in the next few months. Again, what's going to be happening in these next few months? It sounds like it's going to be crazy. Um, he says, do not ignore this when you see it on your timeline, like almost like a desperate plea, plea, plea. like, um, a lot of the Hedera community, like is based in the U S and Canada and is, you know, like there's a lot of mostly English speaking folks on my timeline from the community. And the reality is, is that a lot of this innovation is just going to be happening elsewhere and we need to tune in. We need to get more global. We need to bridge some gaps. I know we're trying to go cross network, but let's try to go cross country and just, you know, stay tuned into what's happening globally. Like there's in Dubai, there's crazy things happening. But when you see the stuff regarding the blockchain Yatra on your timeline, pay attention to it. It's huge. And um, the big deal here is IDS has a contract. The IDS is a partner for this. They have a contract with the Indian government until 2030 to train 500,000 developers and Hashgraph Association is the main partner. So this is just a massive influx of talent into the ecosystem at a global scale. Um, just, you know, digging it, vibing it, loving it. Um, Citadel Wallet, um, Citadel Wallet has some updates. They introduced their NFT collection, of course. Um, the guardian of the Citadel, um, uh, they've, they had over 2,100 pre-orders for their wallet through the NFTs, right? You bought these NFTs. It was a wallet pre-order. Um, that's impressive. It was 4 million H bar. So, uh, what they've done and for folks unfamiliar with Citadel wallet, this is a hardware wallet for Hedera. You know, a lot of people aren't fans of ledger. Um, so this is a hardware wallet specifically developed for Hedera that, uh, can, accommodate any transaction type. Um, there was a rapid change in the HBAR to USD exchange rate during the launch of these NFTs and early buyers paid more in HBAR than intended. Um, so there is another, I think, NFT drops they did. Go check it out. Set it out wallet. It's like a, it's like a vibe. They're, they're kind of, you know, given a little extra. So if you are a holder of those NFTs, go check it out, check in with them. The last few sips of that coffee. We're almost there, folks. Um, now, Citadel Wallet um, has proactively secured essential components for their wallet, and they've considered global supply chain challenges. They've ordered components for 3,000 units to ensure a timely delivery, right? They have 2,100 pre-orders. The design is ready for mass manufacturing. The electric board for the wallet was refined for certifications and improved features. They've added a new metal shield, right, for uh, potential threats. They've required UPC barcodes, um, and they are preparing the wallet for sale on global platforms like Amazon. So stuff's coming alive for Citadel Wallet. So shout out to those guys. That's amazing. Um, uh, eight, uh, an, a Hedera-specific hardware wallet is amazing. So shout out to those guys. Um, also, uh, other big news, um, is the, uh, the, um, JSON RPC relay, um, and new providers. Uh, so the 
Open source JSON RPC code base for Hedera has been integrated with several platforms, making it easier for developers to integrate Web3 applications. And essentially what this RPC relay is, is a way for other network applications to interface with the Hedera network. So for example, in MetaMask, holding HBAR, or performing transactions on the network, connecting MetaMask to saucer swap, doing all sorts of funky things cross chain and it's like this the super fast highway to do it it's exciting um and they've done a lot of really big things about it it's pretty technical i have a bunch of notes but um essentially the the other big news here is validation cloud a leading rpc node provider has integrated with the hedera network to enhance connectivity and tools aiming to simplify the migration process for ethereum developers and boost application development on hedera um, and the, that's basically the headline here is they want to, um, you know, support popular wallets like MetaMask to make it easier for users to manage their digital assets on Hedera and interact with various applications on Hedera, um, in DeFi, NFT and gaming. And just, again, connect all these things together. Imagine if you didn't have to get a hash pack to dive into Hedera, you could just use your MetaMask. How crazy would that be? So that's the big news there. Um, you know, pretty technical, go read it, but just, you know, want it to be on folks radar, you know, there will be a day coming very soon where if you have a friend or somebody you want to check out Hedera, you don't have to tell them to get a hash pack. They can just pick up and go where they are, which is pretty crazy. Um, now what's some other things, uh, that we haven't talked about? Have we missed anything? Uh, Aberdeen governing council member. As we've learned, they're going to be tokenizing 600 billion pounds, or sorry, 16 billion, sorry, Jesus, 16 billion pounds, um, about $20 billion of assets on Hedera. Um, those are being tokenized. Um, Sivo, aka Parabolic HBAR, shared some screenshots from, um, from Hash Scan, the network explorer of tokenized assets on the network from Aberdeen that are these. I imagine mutual funds. So that's really, really cool. It's, it's happening. It's real crazy. Um, the, uh, let me see here. What else? Uh, we hit 18 billion transactions. Oh my God. Like, um, it's, it's like, you can only celebrate it so much. Amazing. Like we're doing a billion transactions every two weeks, almost, uh, it's crazy. Um, you know, January, we were doing single digit TPS and now we're doing, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand transactions a second. Wild. 18 billion transactions. Crazy. Um, so, you know, we'll have to see where that goes. Uh, hopefully it goes up. And uh, yeah, I keep forgetting to celebrate these milestones. They happen so frequently. Um, I literally think Hedera doesn't remember to celebrate them because no longer... Do we have a tweet from Hedera that, you know, 18 billion right when it hits it, they're like retweeting other people from the community and stuff, which is cool, but just goes to show how quickly things are growing. And speaking of that, with the recent price increases in HBAR, it caused HBAR to um, temporarily surpass Ethereum Classic and market cap. Ethereum Classic has been holding that number 29 spot on coin market cap. Um, for its market cap and Hedera moved up to spot 29, which was exciting. Uh, not permanent. Um, uh, Hedera is back at spot 30. Um, but that was exciting. Um, what else? Uh, Tomb Technologies has successfully completed a security audit of Identify, their service bringing Hedera decentralized identity to MetaMask via Snaps. So from the refi kind of tooling provider space, there are more integrations with MetaMask. What an exciting headline that is. MetaMask integrating with Hedera. That's crazy. Um, and the last thing is Lunar Crush tweeting again, quote, for the second time in a row this week, Hedera Hashgraph has hit alt rank number one out of the top 4,400 coins across the market. Alt rank is based on relative combined social and market activity. 
Price is up 14.7% with almost 10 billion, or sorry, 10 million social engagements or the, over the past 24 hours. So Hedera growing in uh, popularity. So that was a big thing. And wow, another week behind us and another week ahead, guys. And before I share my quick final thoughts for the week, a huge shout out to everyone listening live on Twitter Spaces right now. Another shout out to everyone listening to the recording on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. And an extra shout out to all the supporters of the show. The contributions mean so much. Um, and another mention, you know, the Hello Future Music Multifile NFT Community Anthem is out now. Go check it out on Turtle Moon. Grab a copy. It's a couple bucks. It's a vibe. Um, and just, again, huge thank you for everyone supporting that. I will be on the H Bar Bull Show next episode, so go check that out. Um, and yeah, theme of the show: never a dull moment. That's what I called the show. Um, not a dull moment. Uh, a lot to talk about. Almost too much to talk about. Um, and there is a lot going on. Clearly, um, and I don't think much more needs to be said. I've I've kind of shared my thoughts on everything. I think that the key takeaway here is just keep an open mind. Approach the space with empathy and treat Hedera Hashgraph as something incredible that can be used to make every other Web3 network better, right? So that's the key takeaways for me. Um, and just, you know, go touch some grass. I, you know, I think that it's like, it sounds dumb, but through this bear market, there's been so much hard work going on behind the scenes in the community, everywhere. Everyone has been nose to the grindstone with very, very little resources. Um, and so just a quick shout out uh, for uh, mental health. Um, take a breather now and then. Um, it, it, th crazy things will still keep happening um, as things continue. And uh, it's not going to stop. It will never be a dull moment. So I can guarantee you will not uh, miss anything if you take a breather here and there. Um, it, you will come back and things will still be crazy. So, um, and that's a wrap for Hashgraph Enthusiast News and Rumors episode 88. Uh, never a dull moment. Broadcast live on Twitter Spaces every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And made available on all major podcast platforms the following Monday, that's tomorrow. Or I guess if you're listening to this, that's today. If you'd like to become a supporter of the show, you can send an HBAR contribution to enthusiast.hbar using your Hedera wallet. The show's full Hedera address is in the podcast show notes, YouTube description, and in the mega thread pinned up on the Jumbotron. Get all the info you need about the show at itsbrandnd.com slash HBAR. And I will see you next Sunday. And as usual, if you see someone listening, reach out to them. Ask him what's going on. Shoot him a DM. Um, let's stay connected. And with that, hello future. Goodbye, past.